Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome, man. Welcome to Beyond Classic Rock. Uh, today, I've got a complimentary quad for you, man. And it's featuring the music of uh, movie scores, specifically uh, Western movies. Remember some of the old uh, spaghetti Westerns? Really, really great Westerns back in the day. Uh, among them is Once Upon a Time in the West, followed by A Fistful of Dollars, followed by For a Few Dollars More, and finally, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. So, man, um, this is, uh, I believe, the created the creation of a gentleman named Ennio Morricone. And um, first off, I want to give a shout out to John. Thank you very much, John. Uh, John is the person responsible for this recommendation, and he said that uh, he would like to title this quad a tribute to the maestro Ennio Morricone. Not a problem. And um, this is going to be performed by the Danish Symphony Orchestra. So, so uh, I believe that Enyo is uh, the creator of the scores, but it's being conducted and performed by um, uh, the uh, Danish Symphony Orchestra. So, first, John has a note for me. Wayne, I hope this finds you well. Yesterday, I came across the performance of The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. At first, I ignored it, but finally decided to click on it to see what it was all about. At the end of the performance, I applauded and knew that this performance was to be saved in its own folder, which I named Masterpieces. It was funny, after saving it in the folder and then looking at the comments, the first comment I read said, There are two kinds of people in this world, those who consider this a masterpiece and those who are wrong. I immediately replied to that, You're damn right. If you are familiar with the movie, you might recognize that comment as a play on some of the exchanges in the movie. My favorite being when Blondie said to Tuco, You see, in this world, there's two kinds of people, my friend. Those with loaded guns and those who dig. You dig. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure I, I remember the, uh, the scene. Because first in the movie, Tuco... Uh, Eli Wallace was it? He's the ugly. He made Blondie Clint Eastwood walk across the desert. And so now I believe that now uh, Blondie is making him uh, dig out of retaliation. I think that's how I got it. I, I don't know if I got it straight, but um, that's how I, rem I remember it. And John said, I hope you enjoy this quad. All the best. Right on, John. Thank you, man. So let's do this. Let's check out our first try. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. Because there isn't a specific amount of detailed information for each particular uh, score. Let's bunch them together. So uh, one after the other, okay? And it's basically like um, sitting down and taking in a really, really nice uh, concert. So I think it's better that way. And then at the end, we're just gonna focus um, more specifically on the maestro himself with a bio read rather than trying to source out um, all kinds of different um, song details and stuff like that for the actual scores, which will probably take forever to do. So let's just focus on the maestro. All right, so let's go all the way through, man. No breaks. So in total, we got ourselves a 22 minute concert starting with Once Upon a Time in the West. Let's get it. Cheers. I'm not sure if I've ever seen that movie.
doesn't get any better. to see how they make these uh, sounds give you those feels.
said. Wow, man. It's beautiful to see all of those elements coming together. dollars more.
it's nice to enjoy this one. You know. John says there's two parts to this. The second part is the ecstasy of gold, which was the music playing when Tuco was running around the graveyard.
silhouette of Quinn. so uniformed with one sync mindset, you know? Everybody is in key. It's like the collective. It's like the board. You know what I'm talking about? It's fantastic whenever I see uh, orchestra symphonies um, uh, perform. It's just one of those things that just gets you, man, you know? Uh, representing the height of human uh, achievement and perfection, you know? Absolutely. All right. Give me a quick sec. And I'll be right back. Okay, everybody, back. So that was an excellent, excellent experience. And uh, John, I really uh, appreciate the fact that you uh, present so many different uh, things, you know, especially for this platform. John has also um, sent me some great jazz uh, in the past. He's um, responsible for the Yoyoka Suma. Um, reaction uh, that I did on this platform and it's um, one of my highest viewed um, reactions and uh, and I'm not just talking about the Beyond Classic platform. On the Beyond Classic platform it's the highest viewed um, performance. On the uh, when you're comparing it to Classic uh, pla platform only the Led Zeppelins and the Pink Floyds um, have more views within a certain time frame than the Yoyoko Soma um, reaction. So that just goes to uh, give you an idea, you know. So uh, John is responsible for some of these really, really excellent recommendations, and they're always different. So thanks for that, man. Especially in keeping with this platform, where it's about variety. You know what I mean? We're not just regimented to one little uh, time sequence like that of the classic rock platform. So, let's do this. Before we get to um, Maestro, let's uh, take a look at some of the great people uh, that was a part of this. And of course, I'm not going to focus on reading too much about them specifically. I'm just going to stay uh, focused on the maestro. So, Sarah Hicks is the conductor. She's a really, really excellent uh, conductor. She's very beautiful as well. Uh, Tuva Semmingsen is the mezzo soprano in the first track and the Wawa girl in The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. And, uh, Yes, and John says she's magnificent, and you gotta love her Colt 45 Peacemaker earrings. <laughs> um, Christine Nando Anderson is the soprano in The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, and is a magnificent as well, John says. No one seems quite sure who's the guy they hung from the rafters, but a prevailing theory is he was a guy from the choir who couldn't hit the right notes. Vikings were never known for messing around. <laughs> Unquote. Right on. Yeah, some really, really cool props there. You know, the silhouette of Clint, you know, and the guys wearing the cowboy hats and having a little mini shootout. That was really cool. All right, let's focus on the man himself, the composer. Ennio Morricone. Ennio Morricone. The 10th of November, 1928, 
to the 6th of July, 2020, was an Italian composer, orchestrator, conductor, and trumpeter who wrote music in a wide range of styles. With more than 400 scores for cinema and TV, as well as more than 100 classical works, Morricone is widely considered one of the most prolific and greatest film composers of all time. His filmography includes more than 70 award-winning films, all Sergio Leone's films since A Fistful of Dollars, all Giuseppe Torotoni's uh, Tornatore's films since Cinema Paradiso, The Battle of Algiers, Dario Argento's Animal Trilogy, 1900, Exorcist II, Days of Heaven, several major films in French cinema, in particular the comedy trilogy La Cage of Fall, 1, 2, and 3, and La Professionnelle, as well as The Thing, Once Upon a Time in America, great movie, The Mission, The Untouchables, Mission to Mars, Bugsy, Disclosure, In the Line of Fire, Bulworth, Ripley's Game, and The Hateful Eight. His score to The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly in 66 is regarded as one of the most recognizable and influential soundtracks in history. It was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame. His other achievements include three Grammy Awards, three Golden Globes, six BAFTAs, 10 David D. Donatello, 11 Nastro di Argento, Argent, two European Film Awards, the Golden Lion Honorary Award, and the Polar Music Prize in 2010. Morricone influenced many artists from film scoring to other styles and genres, including Hans Zimmer, Danger Mouse, Dire Straits, Muse, Metallica, Fields of the Nephilim, and Radiohead. Wow, what a great, great lifetime of accomplishments and creativity. So much creativity coming from one person. Isn't that astounding? It's astounding. It'll blow your mind. And I'm only reading you two paragraphs of an entire bio page. And if I sat here to read this entire bio page, it would take me an hour to read the whole thing, and I'm not going to do that. So I'm just wrapping it up in a little tight pocket, and it's not even, I would say it's only um, maybe a quarter of all of his accomplishments and accolades. But you get the idea, you get the impression of um, the significance of this person. So yeah, man, um, cheers to you. Rest in peace. You've accomplished so much in your life, Mr. Morricone. And uh, yeah, man, you've given us some really, really fantastic memories and timepieces. Let me tell you, you know, all of those great Westerns and all of those great movies that I mentioned, I've seen a number of them. A lot of them I haven't seen. And I'm telling you this right now. Right after I'm finished with my day, I'm going to end my day by watching Once Upon a Time in the West because I'm not quite sure if I've seen that movie at all. I've seen A Fistful of Dollars for a few dollars more and The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, but I, I can't recall Once Upon a Time in the West. I Maybe as a kid, you know, because my parents used to watch a lot of Westerns and I might happen to have been there, but I can't recall. So once I start watching, maybe it'll come back to me, but I'm definitely inspired to uh, do that, you know, and maybe check out a couple of more of these fantastic movies just for the scores alone. All right, y'all. So that concludes our look at a fantastic, fantastic composer and a great creative talent. You know, it blows my mind that one person can create so much. That is the biggest takeaway that I've got from this uh, particular reaction, is that out of one person, so much can come. And that is a reminder to us all not to take each other for granted, right? It reminds me of, and of course I'm switching genres on you here, man. It reminds me of the story of uh, CCR, Credence Clearwater Revival. 
what I took away from the uh, CCR Artist of the Month was the significance of John Fogarty and his creativity. Now, if you are one of the band members, you're saying to yourself, oh, it's just my brother, John. It's my, just my uh, good friend or my best friend, John. Not realizing that this person, the world views as this great, great creative force, this mill of great creativity and wonderful music and fantastic things. You know, so it's a, a call to us to remind us not to take anyone for granted. Every single person in this world, walking this world, has great, great potential significance, like this person here, right? So even though there are brother or sister or friends, uh, people that we've known for so long or whatever the case is, you might see them one way, but the world will see them a different way. And we gotta keep that in mind and not take each other for granted. We are all that special and that significant. All right, so with that said, John, you're very special and significant. I don't hear from you often, but when you do come around and you offer me um, a reaction, you definitely uh, don't disappoint, man. So thanks for the variety. And John's been um, one of my longest running subscribers and uh, patrons. And like I said, he's not around often, but when he does pop in for a visit, he definitely comes with something really, really excellent. So, John, I appreciate you. You're one of my faves, brother. I don't pull favorites too often, but, John, you are definitely one of them. So, with that said, I'm going to bounce. But before I bounce, mm. um, Caden, Jeffrey, Jerry, Jeff, got reactions I got to hit up. A few patrons, got a, a few new patrons and a couple of PayPal submissions. You guys have probably noted that uh, a number, I've really reduced the number of um, patrons uh, that I am taking in. Um, I've kind of put a cap on it only because I'm going to be getting busy. It's the fall season, late summer, fall season, going into the fall season. Life is going to pick up and get busy. So I don't want to have an overload of uh, work facing me where it comes to reactions. I allot so many hours out of my life for it, and I don't want it to overlap too much and take too much away. Um, I did that in the first uh, bit when I started this channel, and I don't want to get into that anymore. So you're going to see that there's a little bit of a falling off. That is a deliberate thing because I'm really scalping down on my time commitment to everything, and I got to lock in my time factor. So what I'm asking from a lot of folks, especially from patrons, is, be, is to uh, keep in mind my time commitment. I am not going to be doing double albums and um, uh, concert bootlegs and really long documentaries or interviews and things of that sort. Even if you send me a complimentary quad, please keep those music or those songs under 10 minutes, right? If it's over 10 minutes, think about me and don't submit it or just submit it as a, a triple shot or something like that because my time is the most important thing in my life and I really need, especially for a certain number of people who I keep reminding to respect that, all right? So if you don't respect that and I don't want to be all bullying and all of that sort of thing, I might take it away. I might even go as far as shutting down one of the platforms. It's that important to me. So, patrons, I'm addressing you specifically because you make up about 75 to 80 percent of my reactions. Please be considerate of my time. When you're sending me recommendations, please make sure that you don't send me a shit ton of notes and all different sorts of links. Check this out. Check this out. Go here, here. Think about my time. Okay? That's what I'm asking of you, especially patrons. So thanks very much. Keep the notes to uh, a decent paragraph or so. You know, you can say what you need to say in a decent paragraph or so. Anything more than that, now you're making me work, right? And it's taking a lot of time to do so. Each particular video that I produce on average is four to six hours. From the time I do reactions, edit, upload, post, it takes that much time out of my life. So please be considerate uh, towards my time, okay? Especially patrons. And uh, there's some specific people that I'm addressing. They know who they are. All right. 
So thanks again, uh, John. I appreciate this. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed the hell out of this. And immediately after my day is over, I'm going to go and I'm going to check out Once Upon a Time in the West. So you guys have yourselves a good one. Take care. If you go and you check out one of these movies and you've been inspired by this to do so, let me know about it. That'd be cool. Anyway, have a good one. Peace.